In the center of Austria's Eastern Alps is one of the most beautiful natural landscapes in Europe, the Hohertan National Park. It measures 1,800 square kilometers and extends across three federal states, Carinthia, Salzburg and East Tyrol. The mighty peaks of the Ankergel mountain range form a splendid backdrop to the village of Malnitz, the last train station of the Tauern Line. The 3,000 meter high Ankurgel mountain group makes up the eastern section of the Hohe Tauern. Here, the impressive mountain scenery shows both its wild as well as its romantic side. Despite its cold climate, there have always been settlements in this region. Numerous walking routes, such as the Seebachtal Nature Trail, are not only a good way by which to enjoy the scenery, but also provide valuable information about this region. The two and a half hour walk leads to the entrance of the Seebachtal, the best known and most unspoiled region of the Eastern Alps. This high mountain region is full of contrast. Rocks, water, ice-covered mountain peaks and pastures unite to create a truly magnificent scene. The dense forests of the Hohertauern National Park contain an extraordinary variety of plant life. Three thousand five hundred years ago, some sections of today's national park contained human settlements. Though at that time, life in this part of the Alps must have been extremely hazardous. In summer, the idyllic landscape of the Dersental is a wonderful sight as though doing its best to compensate for the long, hard winters that those who lived here in bygone times were forced to endure. The Archer von Schmidthaus is situated at Dürsenessee at an altitude of almost 2,300 meters above sea level. It's a fine sight. Here one can gain an insight into the work of the Salma, a tribe that once transported all kinds of goods across the mountain passes. The most precious goods were wine and salt. There are several Salma pathways in today's national park. For many centuries, the heavy loads taken on the treacherous journeys across the mountain passes of the Alps were carried by horse or donkey. Although the 3,252-meter-high Ankogel became famous as the eponym of the Ankogel group, it is not the highest mountain in this region. A cable car connects Malnitz Spa with a mountain station located at 2,630 meters above sea level that has the most wonderful views. This mountain station is also the starting point of many good walks through the steep mountain world of the Ankogo.
Originally, the Ankogel was a few meters higher than it is today, but in 1932, a landslide collapsed its summit. This mountain made history as being one of the first 3,000 meter high mountains to be conquered by man. Setting off from the Anlov Valley, a farmer from Berkstein climbed to the summit of the Ankogel in 1762. Today, it's popular with both climbers and walkers alike. The deep and narrow Raga Canyon, close to the small village of Flatach in Carinthia, is a unique treasure. In some sections, the canyon is just a few meters wide. Since the last ice age, the Raga Creek has cut its way deeper and deeper into the rock. In 1929, the spectacular Raga Canyon in the Miltal was made accessible by a number of steps and bridges. At the entrance to the canyon is a particularly popular site, a 10 meter high waterfall. In winter, the region around the Moltala Glacier is especially popular, and the skiing here is perfect. The glacier also possesses a special charm in summer, as at an altitude of 3,000 meters above sea level, there is always snow here, even though the ski lift is deserted. The section of the glacier that's covered with snow throughout the year constantly forms ice that gradually extends to the deeper mountain regions. A journey to the eternal ice of the glacier is one of the most fascinating experiences to be had in the Hoatan National Park. The extreme contrast of the summer temperatures and the glistening winter landscape is something to behold. The warmer months transform Carinthia's Asnatal into a world full of life. Numerous plants blossom in the lush green meadows. Despite the number of settlements that have been here since bygone times, the scenery has remained intact. Picture postcard perfect. Beneath the mighty mountain peaks, the many small huts of this region's mountain farms blend harmoniously into the picturesque landscape of the Asnatal. A further splendid nature trail in the Gradental takes walkers into the unique beauty of the high mountain landscape. In addition to the natural splendor of the local vegetation, various magnificent waterfalls add further drama to the landscape. The moving mountain at the northern entrance to the Gradental has frequent and unpredictable landslides and so must be treated with the greatest caution. Indeed, many farms have had to be abandoned due to this. 
It's an area that combines untouched nature and cultivated land. Here one can encounter those particularly curious creatures that inhabit the narrow and wildly romantic Trogdal. Nearby, the water tumbles down the rocky terrain. The small hamlet of Apriach, east of Heiligenblut, brings to mind the history of settlement in the Hohertan. There are still eight working mills here, with each one containing a special theme. The mills of Apriach are not only a charming and nostalgic site, they also highlight the history of traditional Alpine mill construction. In the Fleistal near Heiligenblatt, there is a gold prospector's village that has been built on historic ground. Tauen gold was known to both Celts and Romans, but the serious mining of the gold began in the 16th century. Evacuation was carried out with the aid of gunpowder. Before then, the ore had to be extracted from the mountain manually. The Gold Prospector's village is similar to those in the west of the USA, where the gold rush of old has now also been relegated to the history books. Thanks to the construction of this village, the working methods and living conditions of the former gold diggers has been preserved for posterity. The protected ruins of the Altenpoker date back to the time when the mining of gold was the main source of income in the Upper Multal. A good starting point for various trips into the Grossglockner area is the village of Heiligenblut that has a population of around a thousand. It's one of the highest mountain villages in Austria. The beautiful pilgrimage church of Heiligenblut St. Vincenz is one of the most important cultural sites in this vicinity. It was built in 1483, a splendid example of a rural sacred building designed in Gothic style. Today, the interior of the St. Vincennes captures the eye with its artistically worked sculptures and elegant glass windows. Most who visit the Hohertauern National Park don't do so solely to admire its cultural treasures, but also to come to enjoy its captivating scenery. Located beneath the Grossglockner, the Pastetzsee is the largest glacier in the Austrian Alps and measures almost nine kilometers in length. Mm. 
Now part of the history of Europe's nature conservation, timber industrialist Albert Wert became known as the savior of the Grossglockner. The timber industrialist from Villach purchased the entire area in order to protect it from destruction. He succeeded in his goal. However, for some years, the glacial ice has been gradually receding. Since the middle of the 19th century, the surface of the ice has decreased to half its size. The changing climate has most certainly made its mark here. And the situation is not getting any better. Unfortunately, each year the Pastetsi loses an increasing amount of ice. A sure sign of climatic change and the effects of massive industrialization. However, in some sections, the layers of ice are still several hundred meters thick. This high mountain region was made accessible in the 20th century. Now a cable car leads close to the glacier's tongue. The huge masses of ice on the Pastetsi are constantly on the move. Each year they flow between 10 and 30 meters into the valley below. Much has changed here in recent times. In the surroundings of the Pastetsi, a number of restaurants provide a magnificent view across the glacier. And even the shy marmots have grown accustomed to visitors. Since the opening of the Grossglockner High Mountain Road in 1935, the number of visitors to this region has grown from year to year. Various archaeological finds have shown that the Celts and Romans followed set routes through the Alps. Along the Glockner paths, as well as in various other sections of the park, are various old sanctuaries. Due to its spectacular location and marvellous views, the Grossglockner High Alps Road is extremely popular. The 48 kilometer long panoramic road is well worth traveling on. At the foot of the Hohertan in the Salzburg section of the Glockner Group is Kaprun, that together with Zell am See is a popular tourist center. At this high altitude, the lake is an amazing sight. Yet it didn't originate naturally. It was created by man. The 2,000 meter high and picturesque Musseboden Reservoir is part of the Glöckner Kaprun power station. Responsible for the damming of the reservoir are two huge dams, the Musa and the Drossen. In the 1920s, there were plans to build a power station in the Kaprun region, but the project only reached fruition in 1955. The construction of the 100 meter high retaining wall posed a great technical challenge for the engineers of the day.
due to its huge dimensions and the fact that it was built after the Second World War, this project is also a symbol of the post-war reconstruction of Austria. Six hundred and sixty-five thousand cubic meters of concrete were used for the construction of the five hundred meter long and, at its base, seventy meter wide Musespera. The views from here are quite breathtaking. The technical achievement of the dam is crowned by the remarkable scenery of the area. The stepped Krimla waterfalls are a unique natural spectacle. Here, great masses of water that originate from the glaciers of the Grosvenadiga High Alps create a dramatic scene. The impressive natural power of the water is at its zenith in the warmer months, when up to 40,000 litres of water a second rush down into the valley below. The walking routes along the Krimla waterfalls pass close by forests that are particularly dense. A total of 17 mountain creeks feed the torrential Krimla Akka as well as the three waterfalls. The humid mist that rises from the waterfalls is carried by the wind into the nearby forests. The humidity promotes plant growth. There were once plans to harness the immense power of the water here with a hydroelectric power plant, but luckily they weren't taken any further. So the natural beauty of the Krimla waterfalls has managed to survive to the present day, and the torrential water is still wild and untamed. The vantage points that have been built to cope with the growing number of visitors here are the man-made parts of the landscape. The Krimla waterfalls have become very popular, hardly surprising when seeing such a natural spectacle. One of the most beautiful high valleys of the Venediga group in the Eastern Alps is the Inigeschluss. It can be reached by tractor or on foot on the Tauern walking route. The Geschlers Creek gives this enchanting valley its idyllic atmosphere. The Tauern Creek dominates the Inigeschloss landscape. As one follows the creek further up the valley, the scenery is even more enchanting. Despite its remoteness, some sections of the valley have been used for agriculture for several centuries. The mountain farmers are this region's living cultural heritage.
Although this small village church looks real, it isn't. It was once used as a picturesque backdrop for a motion picture. The surrounding mountains that are part of this mighty Venediga group, added to the lush mountain meadows, make an ideal setting for a movie. In the Geschlosstal, both man and beast still live together in perfect harmony with nature. Here in the heart of the Hoatar National Park, time seems to stand still. The beginning of the new Inagerschloss Glacier Nature Trail retraces an ancient shepherd's route. A walk on this route can take several hours. There are many waterfalls along the way that are good places to take a break. The closer one travels to the Schlattenkies glacier area of the Grosvenediger, the more rocky and barren the landscape becomes. Steep rock walls and the great masses of water that flow down the mountain creeks dominate the scenery. The Schlattenkies is the largest glacier in the Tyrolean section of the Venediger group, although it has lost much of its volume due to climate change. Our next destination along the Inigerschloss Glacier Trail is situated at an altitude of more than 2,500 meters above sea level the truly idyllic Salzboden Sea that is supplied by several natural springs. Close to the lake is the next attraction in the Salzboden. God's Eye, a pond that contains a tiny island that is reminiscent of an eye. From this point, the path leads to the highest point of this particular walking route. That's a great view across the glacier. After crossing a wooden bridge across a glacial creek, the route leads along a number of smooth rocks on the edge of Schlattenkies. For thousands of years, the ice here has ground away at the surface of the mountain, making it very smooth. Many legends surround the Grosvenediger Glacier. Most of them feature the mining of gold. One of the most well-known beings of this region is an old man, the Venediger Mandel, a legendary character who plays an important role in many of the ancient stories and legends of the area. The sight of this fascinating scenery of ice and stone makes the existence of such a being almost credible. The Schleier Waterfall is a natural monument of a special kind. It is located along the route to Karls, southwest of the Grossglockner, on the border of Salzburg and Carinthia, in the center of the Hohertal National Park.
The park is important for various birds that would be threatened by extinction, but that have found a safe habitat within the unspoiled landscape of this remarkable region. It's difficult to believe that, following the last ice age 12,000 years ago, the Hoa Town was once a barren desert covered with rock and debris. Both plant and animal life gradually settled in this newly created habitat. Man has lived in the valleys of this region for 5,000 years. The park has developed into a popular tourist attraction and a good choice of accommodation. The village of Virgen in East Tyrol, that has around 2,000 inhabitants, was first mentioned in written form in 1164. Today, village life is centered around tourism, and Virgen has a good number of inns and guest houses. The village's centuries old history is reflected in its traditional, artistically decorated buildings. The origin of the pilgrimage church of Maria Schnee in Obermann dates back to the first villages of the Eastern Tyrol. The church rises into the sky and is surrounded by old timber-built houses, as well as more recent ones that have been built according to traditional design. The Maria Schnee church is famous for its late Gothic frescoes. However, some of these extraordinary works of art have suffered due to the ravages of time. The majority of the frescoes date back to the 15th century. The late Gothic style of the church's outer facade highlights the special significance of this pilgrimage destination. For the protection of the main gate from the harsh mountain winds at the end of the 17th century, a wide front hall with a heavy wooden roof was built. The interior of the church is particularly impressive. It's quite a sight. The single-aisled interior is spanned by a modest, though perfectly worked vault that adds to the splendor of this unique religious building. The highlight of the Maria Schnee Church is its northern wall that is covered with frescoes that were only quite recently fully restored. The frescoes feature the New Testament. These impressive motifs were the work of an artist from Pustatala who lived in the 15th century, Simon Marenkel von Teisten. The sole artists of the Count of Goetze created the frescoes of Maria Schnee, a fine work of art that is reminiscent of a sacred picture book. The idyllic village of Pragraten is located at an altitude of 1300 meters at the end of the Virgen Valley beneath the Grosvenediger. The 
village has 1,200 inhabitants and is the starting point of many walks. Pragraten itself is well worth a visit. The village has retained its original atmosphere right up to the present day. It's a tranquil place. For those who don't want to walk, other means of transport are available. The local area can also be explored with a horse and carriage. The landscape here was formed by a glacial stream. It is at its most impressive in the Umbal Valley at Eisel Creek. The valley's natural landmark is the steep Umbal Falls. Its water carries with it a large amount of small rocks from the glaciers. The rocks carried by the water have cut their way deeper and deeper into the ground and have created features such as this narrow canyon. Over the years, the swirls and currents of the flowing water have created several different forms in the rock. A spectacular work of art. The largest subglacial stream at the southern section of the Hohertan features the untamed force of the roaring masses of water that plunge down over several steps into the Umbal Valley. A fascinating sight. Close to the Umbal Falls, the vegetation is particularly dense. Fertile forests cover the steep slopes of the valley. The water level of the Eisel changes according to the time of year. In summer, the waterfalls are a dramatic sight. The Hohertan's water observation trail that was created in 1976 provides a good insight into the natural course of this subglacial stream. Magnificent mountain meadows also indicate that these remote regions in the Umbal Valley have been farmed for many years. The tiny valley has a calm and idyllic atmosphere. The arrival of the horse and carriage announces our return to the nearby Virgenthal. In addition to the Kalsetal, the Eiseltal and the Virgenthal, the Defaregenthal is one of the park's four most well-known landscapes. St. Veit is located at an altitude of 1500 meters above sea level and is the highest mountain spa in Austria. It features centuries-old farmhouses and a fine village church. It's a wonderfully atmospheric place. The St. Veit Church is a marvellous example of the local religious architecture that exists in the Hohertan National Park. The interior of the church exudes a modest beauty. 
but both altar and pulpit had been meticulously worked. We ascend the Brugge Arm by chairlift, and the small station that serves up traditional Austrian fare also features a collection of traditional farm buildings. From here, there's a breathtaking view across the beautiful mountain world of the Eastern Tyrol, while the local mountain flora shines out in all its glory and the meadows and the colors of the sky reflect the crystalline lakes. Even in summer, the highest peaks of the Hoatan National Park are covered with snow in magnificent contrast to the blossoming mountain meadows. The route to the Sibachalm is steep and rises to an altitude of 1879 meters above sea level. But the arduous climb is soon forgotten when one is confronted by the full beauty of the scenery. The local plant life grows at the side of the path and creates much interest from the walkers. At an altitude of 2,000 meters is one of the oldest mountain pastures in Austria that is still in use, the Jagdhalsam. The Jagdhausam was first mentioned in 1212. For some time, it was inhabited throughout the year. However, as the winters here are extremely severe, the old houses are now only inhabited during the summer months. The Stahlersattel connects the Austrian Defa-Regental with the Antolzatal on the Italian side of the southern Tyrol. This mountain pass is situated at an altitude of more than 2,000 meters and was used by the Salma at the end of the last ice age. The route leads through one of the region's most beautiful landscapes. The vast variety and originality of this region highlight the unique value of the Hohertauern National Park. Here in the heart of Europe is one of nature's final sanctuaries. High above the valleys are the spectacular peaks of the Grossglockner and the Grossvenediger mountain ranges the guardians of this splendidly unique alpine landscape. <laughs> 